Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're about halfway there through the week, living on a prayer right now, as the markets have taken a bit of a beating, or at least my portfolio has. I think I had, every single stock I had was a little bit red today, even uh, the ones that have been doing really well, like Palantir. So I think it's largely to do with uh, the debt ceiling. We're going to see a lot of volatility day by day as people try to interpret how the so-called negotiations are going over the debt ceiling, okay? I mean, look at how bipolar some of the articles have been. Like, some of them talking about the stock market going up as people are optimistic and how it's going to plunge if things don't go well. And, oh look, buy the dip because stock markets are sliding. Okay. Now, uh-oh. Sharply lower on deadlock debt ceiling talks. So, it's just basically each day, depending on how people feel the talks are going, the stocks are going to be moving up and down and up and down. And, you know, personally, I'm not going to be changing my criteria for investing based on these debt ceiling call them negotiations but really it's just all you know a real talk it's a bunch of political grandstanding the these um, talks are basically an argument over whether to pay for things that these same people having the argument already like it's basically to pay the the credit card bill essentially on charges they already incurred previously so basically, they made the decision to swipe that credit card, right? And now they're debating over whether to pay the, the minimum payment on the monthly bill. That's essentially what this conversation is. And, we, you know, we can get into the politics of it at some point, I guess, maybe, if people want that. But um, the debt ceiling is essentially just a legislative limit on the amount of national debt that can be incurred by the U.S. Treasury, thus limiting how much money the federal government can pay by borrowing money on debt it already borrowed. Now, what that means is basically they pass these different budgets and stuff, um, you know, spending bills, um, you know, they usually increase military spending. We've had things like the CHIP Act. We've had different kinds of tax cuts and stuff. And year to year, they don't know exactly how much um, revenue is coming in, you know, precisely. They do know, they, you know, they do project, you know, essentially that they do have deficit spending, which means they spend more than they bring in on a year to year basis. They don't know exactly how much that will be. And there's a sort of, I guess, arbitrary limit that they set on like, okay, this is what, these are the bills we decided to pass and how much we want, we want to spend, but here's the limit on how much we're going to let ourselves borrow. And if the two things don't add up, if the arithmetic doesn't add up, at a certain point, the treasury has to borrow more than this limit because they keep running up the bill on the credit card higher and higher. And the minimum payment gets higher and higher as they do that, and interest rates even have gone up, and so that makes it even higher now. Um, you know, and they don't know what interest rates will be, you know, year to year, quarter to quarter, whatever, either. So we don't always know exactly when we're going to hit this limit, only that the limit exists, and if we don't vote to um, re increase it, essentially um, allow the treasury to um, you know write that check essentially to to you know meet these obligations well if we can't meet the obligations we don't pay that minimum payment on that credit card what happens well we're, we're late and you know if you're if you're a regular person that's a hit to your credit report etc and um, you know the United States actually has a credit rating also as do you know, other governments and large companies, etc. And people are, you know, I, I think with, you know, some degree of validity concerned over that. 
Now, interestingly enough, there's been some discussion now, because this isn't the first time this has happened, okay? This has sort of become the, the stick that those who aren't in power um, use in order to try to basically make a show of force and, you know, try to get their way in a number of different ways. And the 14th Amendment has been coming up a lot lately because we'll read it. Section 4 of the 14th Amendment covers public debt. The validity of the public debt of the United States authorized by law, including debts incurred for payment of pensions and bounties for suppressing insurrection and rebellion, shall not be questioned. Now, um, it includes those things, but doesn't really exclude much of anything. The only exclusions are as follows. But neither the United States nor any state shall assume or pay any debt or obligation incurred in the aid of insurrection or rebellion or any claim for the loss of emancipation, but all such debts shall be held illegal and void. So basically it's saying we'll pay for pretty much anything without question. Like they're basically saying the United States treasury is a Lannister. It always pays its debts. And this is in the Constitution, right? The thing that, you know, every single public official swears to uphold, by the way. And basically the, the, the main exceptions in, in it are, uh, you know, in the second part of it, are essentially just kind of like a middle finger to the losing side of the Civil War. Like, if it's basically saying, hey, if you decided to be on the wrong side of, of the Civil War, you know, back in, you know, 1860s, Okay, your SOL, we're not, you know, we're not going to pay for, you know, any of the, any of the, the the costs you incurred in, you know, basically trying to split the country apart. Okay, so I think the first part though is, is pretty darn clear that the validity of public debt of the United States authorized by law, which meaning. If Congress uh, voted to increase spending, cut taxes, whatever, and it, it leads to, you know, an increase in debt, they're saying, okay, that shall not be questioned. We pay our debts. So this puts the Treasury Department in a little bit of a conundrum because we do have this law that says there's a ceiling on, you know, on that debt, but they have obligations to pay that are authorized by law. So it would almost, you know, and I'm no scholar, you know, no legal scholar, but it would almost seem as though the, the debt ceiling, like if, if this were to get, um, you know, brought up before the Supreme Court and they were to interpret, you know, the Constitution like a plain reading, they would probably have to strike down the very idea of this uh, debt ceiling or debt limit um, as a law because it basically is sort of instructing the Treasury Department not to follow the Constitution, which clearly says the validity of the public debt authorized by law, et cetera, et cetera, shall not be questioned. Shall not be questioned. Now, sh uh, shall versus may, um, I, my understanding is that that means like always the case, shall not be questioned. Like under no circumstances would we not pay our debts so that's what the uh that's what the um the good old piece of paper that everybody seems to you know care a lot about when it's convenient for them says and and by the way it also seems that people only really care about spending and um you know fiscal responsibility when it's politically convenient i just want to you know kind of point that out um, nobody talks about it when, I mean, because the, the fiscal irresponsibility, the, you know, the irresponsible spending, the sort of disregard for, you know, deficits, etc. It cuts both, it cuts both ways. It's, they're all guilty of it, right? Across the board. You know, you can check my facts on that, but... Um, the, the voting records of uh, the people in Congress kind of speak for themselves on that. So, personally, I wouldn't doom and gloom this too much. Um, 
I think many of these people um, in Congress actually have pretty substantial stock portfolios. And a lot of their uh, political donors that fund their campaigns also do. So I think ultimately we can rely on people's avarice and greed to go with their own best interests. And ultimately the debt ceiling will most likely be raised before um, the catastrophe. But yeah, I mean, definitely understand why some people are clinching. Uh, it's all just, you know, it is what it is, right? But I'm not going to lose any sleep over it, and I hope you won't either. Take it easy, everyone. And by the way, this is kind of a different kind of content for me, but since it's affecting the financial markets, I figured I'd say my piece and offer a little bit of insight on what these things are and why people are talking about them in a way that speaks to the common average ordinary people like myself. So if you want to continue having um, videos somewhat like this on the channel, give it a like for me. Let me know that you like this kind of thing, and maybe I'll do it more often. Give me a sub if you want to keep following these market-related videos, and join us on Discord if you like having a little bit more real-time interaction. I certainly appreciate the discourse with all of you in an ongoing kind of basis. Let me know what you would like to see next. Take it easy, everyone, and have a fantastic Wednesday.